Hello, everybody. Assalamu alaikum. Satsakar. Namaskar to all the listeners. This is the Tehrik Shabrari for the Shabrari Law Show. Apologize for the lateness today. We're having um, having some issues with my phone. So uh, if you cannot hear me properly, uh, please let me know. So, Michael, let me know if you can hear me. Uh, okay. And um, today, of course, we are going to discuss about immigration law and uh, and we are going to discuss about few issues that we are seeing. And um, the number to the studio is 510-657-1170, 510-657-1170. And anything I'm going to tell you today is my opinion. You should not act or refrain to act solely on the information provided. Uh, you should contact an attorney if you have any questions. So we're going to start with some of the current uh, things happening. For one, you know, now uh, since uh, the beginning of this month, we are we are seeing a lot of issues involved on people getting worried about about denials without RFEs, and uh, this is the the main thing. Uh, will they? The question I'm getting uh, very frequently is, do you? Um, are there every case is not going to get an RFP, or, it, um, or they will just deny the cases uh, directly, things like that. Well, it seems like there was some kind of, and I spoke about that, I think, on the previous show, just to, to for those who, are, who have not listened to that show, um, uh, they are going to be selective. Some cases, they will still issue RFP, and they say also they won't be unfair, which uh, we will have to wait and see. Uh, that they will not just deny it on simple mistakes, but on serious grounds. So the question is, what are the serious grounds? And we don't really know about it at this point. So let's wait and see now. Since uh, September 11, today is October 11. It's been one month uh, since they say that. So let's see how they are going to react. And they also mention um, that they are going to hire some more adjudicators in some service centers, and we have to wait and see on those two. So basically now we are, we are seeing things that uh, we have not seen before, and more and more as we go, it, uh, it is becoming um, very, very difficult now to handle simple cases. So uh, even though before I was saying uh, many times that some people should just certain cases you can do on your own, now we are not recommending people to do pretty much any case on their own. If they can hire a good lawyer to help, uh, you should. Uh, and if you need help, you can call us, 510-742-5887. Michael, since uh, today we're having some issues on the phone, on my phone, actually, <laughs> I will rec- uh, uh, know if there are anybody calling. So please um, uh, feel free to call, 510-657-1170. One one seven zero five one zero six five seven one one seven zero, and uh, this is Attorney Sharp Rally for the Sharp Rally Law Show, and we are discussing, of course, about immigration law, and many matters that are coming. And of course, the next question is uh, about H four EAD. Uh, I'm kind of go over things that people have emailed me or posted on our YouTube channel, which is. Uh, youtube.com slash shop rally law and uh, they have been asking questions like what happens to the h 4 ed I mentioned that uh, before I think two weeks ago that the h 4 ed is um, is pending and but seems that the the uh, the administration is looking forward actually to take it away so now we will have to to decide what will do next we we'll talk a little bit about some options, especially for children who are aging out and uh what we can do really. Uh, there's not much, but we will talk about that. But let me take one caller, Michael. This is Shabra, you're live in here. Hello? 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 This is Shah, you're live in here. Uh, hi, Shah. Thank you so much for taking your uh, time for the uh, for the call. Uh, Thank you so much for calling. I have a question for U visa. Uh, can in, can identity theft be qualified under U visa? I didn't get the, the question. Sorry. Uh, the identity theft can it be treated as a category for um, applying uh, U visa? I've never tried. Uh, we have to know what section uh, 
and you have to actually kind of have a case with the with the police and uh, and you have have the police etc uh it's not it's not obvious uh, it can be under extortion but um it's very difficult to tell because I've never done one but you can give it a shot see if the cops will, will if you put a complaint and they accept it they will sign on it but I cannot tell you for sure yet it will work because it is very convoluted identity stuff can be in different uh, uh ways so uh try to talk to the to the cops and then let's see uh, if they are willing to sign on that great okay. thank you thank you so much for the good okay. luck to you Yes, uh, uh let me take another call. This is Shapura, you are live here. Uh this is Kishore. Good morning, Ali. Yes. Yes, Kishore. Go ahead. I'm listening to you. Yeah. Um I have a question on uh, my H1B. Uh, actually, I have an H1B and I worked for two and a half years for consultancy A. Uh, they got mm-hmm. filed an um, extension, but it got rejected on September 3rd. Mm-hmm. Okay. uh from another consultancy b uh, this is in another location uh, i have filed an extension i got a, a receipt uh, presently i am working on receipt now okay mm-hmm. uh now my question is um i have a company called c uh and my i94 got expired yesterday i have a consultancy c now this consultancy um can file a uh, it won't transfer to them and what will happen uh, from another location it is from boston if a consultant uh, if a okay. company called c i'm a little bit confused since that <laughs> pardon since you have one company they file an extension for you and then company b file another extension yes and then company c file a transfer right yeah yes okay uh, so what company is from company issue? a it got rejected uh, company a it got rejected mm-hmm. company b i and got a receipt presently i am working on that receipt mm-hmm. and my okay. and uh, then did your I-94 original i94 expired expired yeah, yesterday it? it got expired is well, the company can try for a transfer based on what we call a bridge but it's kind of a little bit difficult to get so yeah they can but i will not recommend start working on the receipt because unless the lawyer is willing to do a bridge on that and the bridge is not really uh, always approved it's there but it's not something it's at their discretion so you can kind of pick it right on the pending extension but it's not recommended because there's a big chance it won't get approved and you might find yourself into a lot of issues so so it's it's uh it's not really something we recommend but yeah it is possible it's just like you get you get uh it might be other issues involved okay give me a call we can do a better assessment because this is a little bit complicated at 5107425887 we can do a consultation because right now it's kind of a little bit tricky how it can be done it's not oh. easy but it's possible okay oh okay. let me yeah. take another caller uh michael this is shapra you're live on air hello hi hi sha this hello. is ashish hi, hi. Uh, yes, so sir. actually i have a question that uh, my wife uh, recently got a rfe on her hlb and uh, the mm-hmm. rfp was for specialty of occupation and uh, her mm-hmm. attorney is saying that 99% of uh, these rfp which is related to specialty of occupation it's related to what hello 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 Hello, I think I lost her. Hello. Hello. I think we lost we lost the caller, right Michael? I hope you can still hear me. So I'm so sorry and then uh, I apologize today we are, we I'm doing the, the show on the phone so I'm having some issues with my phone maybe I'm losing the caller so 
apologize for that. Feel free to call again, 510-657-1170, 510-657-1170. Until then, let me talk a little bit about the other thing that is uh, of, the, of the news, is the visa bill chain. Of course, the visa bill chain is out. It seems there is no real movement from the visa bill chain of last, year, uh, last uh, month. It seems like India is June, uh, India for uh, EB1 is still June 2006, um, and, uh, and, uh, also E16, I'm sorry, first, uh, 2016, and the other one is 26 March 2009. So both, I think, uh, I think both October and November same, and I'm kind of comparing it quickly. And then for EB3, uh, for India, is January 2009, so it's still 2009. So at least we don't, we have not seen a retrogression, which is, which is good. Now the question is that, uh, as you know, last, um, last, uh, last time, I think this month, USCIS is accepting the processing, uh, time, uh, on the, on the system, which is, which is the second chart. If you look at it, that means for EB1, October 2017, uh, I mean, uh, October 2017, they, they kind of, uh, of did that. And the processing time, it doesn't seem that it moved actually. It's still the same. So let's hope that USCIS will continue accepting the processing time for filing of the cases. So I think I have a few callers, right, Michael? Let me take a caller. This is Sharp Are you live on air? Hello? Hello? Hi, Sharp Rally. This is Shiva here. Hi, Shiva. Hi. So my question is, I am employed with a full-time employment with direct client. It's not a consulting company. Um, so if mm-hmm. I need to um, join another company, so they started filing my H-1B, but as the premium processing is not there, so they are asking to join in the receipt. Mm-hmm. So what will be those complications? So can I join them if if it will be okay. rejected That's or That's a million something. dollar question. A lot of people Sorry? asking, whether under AC21 Section 105B, if I'm not mistaken, you're allowed to join the company as soon as it's filed. The question is that what happens if the case gets denied? If the case gets denied and the company A where you were working, you are still allowed to do that. You can, you can go back to work uh, for them. But if not, then you will be hanging with nothing. You'll have to either refile, go outside and come back, etc., etc. But yeah, it all depends on the company. It's a case by case basis. If the company is strong, the paperwork is done right, you can go ahead and move. Otherwise, uh, it's better to wait for an approval than move. But the question will they keep your job? That's different. So yes, you can move, but make sure the company is a good company. And then the approval rate for the H-1Bs are high, and also, ultimately, they 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 have done your paperwork right. So, so if he Hello? if I continuously mm-hmm. file like couple of things, like suppose company A and company B, and company A petition I mean H-1 transfer got rejected, can I join company B and then continue working instead of leaving the country? If the transfer is filed before company, let's say we have A, B, C, right? If A uh, is your original company, B is a transfer, C is another transfer, it's filed before A revokes it, then yes, because you're jumping from A to B and O, A to C. But if you already moved to B and A has canceled and you're piggy riding on B to go to C, then not a good idea. Because it it will be a bridge and it's not really uh, a strong case. So, if if it was filed from A to C or A to B, then yes. Okay. 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 No Good luck to you. Let me yeah. take another Thank call, you. Michael. This, you're welcome. This is Sharp Rai. You're live in here. Hello. Hello. This is Shah. Yeah. Hi, Shah. This is uh, Raj. And um, hi, Raj. Yeah, hi. So uh, my question is related to the case. Uh, 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 for me, uh, uh, the sixth year, for me, on sixth year of H1 is going to finish in February 2019. Uh, mm-hmm. My company applied uh, GC in month of uh, January 2017. 
and after mm-hmm. that i got perm approved and till today i140 uh-huh. is uh, still in progress and it's not approved um now uh-huh. what my company lawyer did uh, he filed a uh, uh, extension based on the one year uh, approved uh-huh. perm for one year uh mm-hmm. now in this situation where i140 is uh, still pending and extension is already filed based on the perm approved uh mm-hmm. after february 2019 if there is no result on the h1 extension uh, because we know that it's a, a big waiting right now will i be able to stay legally uh, in us or i have to go back after 240 days you are allowed to stay but you cannot work uh, i i'm sorry shah your voice is breaking can you okay sorry for that if you file the case for an extension okay and the extension is pending for 240 days you can continue working now after the 240 days you can still stay in the united states but you cannot work So okay. is that your question or something else? Okay. Yeah, so you are saying like after February 2019 when the 6th year will get finished and extension is is still pending I can work for 240 days and after that uh, I am not legally supposed to work here. Yeah, if it is pending, if it is approved okay. and then you can continue working but then later on if the term is still pending you can still apply one more time for another year of right. extension is yeah, that another issue got uh-huh. it just one more question on the following same scenario uh, uh mm-hmm. my company lawyer is suggesting me not to uh, do an ex- uh, prior uh, premium for i140 uh they mm-hmm. are saying uh, because they made a special query uh, to the us cis department and they said that they are doing a special background check that's what the response mm-hmm. they my lawyer got so in this case do you suggest to do the i140 premium or uh, you suggest to go it like in a slow way uh, let them do their background check mm-hmm. um well Number one, even if you do premium, they're doing background check. The premium will not clear it because it's kind of they will probably reject the premium. Now, it is becoming. I was going to discuss about that. It's becoming very, very kind of abusive at one point. Now they're doing it pretty much on everybody. But yes, it might be a strategy from your lawyer. It's very hard for me to kind of analyze just like that. But if they're telling you not to go for premium, because All my cases are I file on premium. I never file on regular for I-140 because the reason for that is if later on the candidate wants to move out, they have that six months. But many companies know that drill, so they they don't do premium because then they can hold the candidate for longer. But yeah, if if he has a inquired and there's a background check, even premium will not clear it. So it's useless to do premium. But um, He, he might he might already be clear the background so he is still worth it to do a premium because once you get it approved you get 3 years on H1B but after 6 months your company cannot cancel it you can even use it with other companies so um it might because uh, you don't want to be hanging on this I140 so premium is worth it if I were you I'd probably give it a shot and if they reject it the worst case scenario you lose the money okay Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Good luck Thank to you. Let me take another call, Michael. This is Dr. Are you alive in here? Uh, hey. Hello. Uh, my name. Hello. Uh, hey. Yes, uh, my name is uh, my, my name is Rama. Uh, I have a question hello, regarding Rama. my I140. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I have um, I have an I140 with my previous uh, company back in uh, and the priority mm-hmm. date is like on 2012 July. now uh, i moved like uh, from that company now uh, they're still holding my uh, i140 so my new company right now they are they have actually filed for uh, um, the porting of that i140 uh, from eb3 to eb2 now my question mm-hmm. is like uh, the uh, uh, my new company will they 
still have the ability to revoke my I-140, like if I try to change the company within like six months. Okay, what do you mean by porting? To the, are they refiling a new firm for you? Yes, yes, yes. They are like, uh, yeah, they are, they are, uh, they are uh, porting my I-140 from EB3 category to EB2 uh, category. Okay. So they have so already filed for my filing a new labor. They exactly. Filing yeah, yeah. for labor, etc. Yeah. How long yeah, exactly. have you had your I-140 and the EB3? Uh, it's been like uh, from since 2012. Uh, so it's been like more than four, okay. five years now. Okay. Under the new rule, which was set by Obama before he left, technically after six months, an I-140 cannot be revoked. Uh, okay. So un unless the USCIS does it for fraud or mis um, uh, misrepresentation. But I think you are safe under EB3. Oh. You can use it for extension. You can use it for 5 days. But, of course, to get a green card, then the new company you move to has to refile again from the beginning. So, but, no, they cannot really cancel it, uh, usually okay. because under that new rule. Okay. okay. So, so the new company also cannot do that, right? Like, I mean, can can I have two I one forties like uh, from my previous? Yes. Time, you can current? have as many I one forty as you want. Oh. You can okay, have okay. only one adjustment of status. Okay. Oh, okay. 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 Awesome. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, sir. Thanks a lot. Okay. Good luck to you. Good luck. So let me take another caller, Michael. Okay. So we don't have other callers. So I was talking about the visa built in. It seems there are not many good, many changes and the visa bill change, so I was expecting that um, because they made this sudden move. The only thing that we know now um, uh, is that they have used last month, or for this month, they have used the processing date, that means child B, uh, which they should have done a long time ago, but for a while they have not used it. So luckily now they are, they, they are accepting like 2017 on, on EB1, etc. So Take advantage of that if you have a chance to file an adjustment of status, either on EB1, EB2, EB3, go ahead and do that. And just to let you know, uh, usually adjustment of status belongs to you, so you can usually have your own lawyer to do it. But again, uh, the company might not be happy about it, so uh, think about it. So the visa bill chain is out in November, and I will put a link on our YouTube channel after I post this, uh, this show probably. Uh, the audio of it uh, uh, the, um, in a couple of days. So please feel free to reach out to us if you need any help. 510-742-5887. 510-742-5887. And uh, today we are having some issues with our phone, so bear with us. Please maybe call us in the afternoon, and hopefully we should be able to have all these technical difficulties fixed. Um, just to let you know also, uh, one thing we are we are seeing a lot right now is denials. Uh, well, we are not seeing denials per se, but we are seeing approvals too. By the way, we got some great approvals in the office, and congratulations to IDT for this. We got some very very difficult RFEs where the client came to us uh, and with a difficult RFE, we shifted the case to us. We answered the RFE and we got an approval. So it is uh, becoming really, really a daunting task, even for simple cases now. So I recommend that when you file the case, make sure it's filed right, because what happens if you, do, if you don't, then you're going to see yourself uh, getting a straight denial. Remember the, the September uh, 2011 uh, memo, so you have to... Uh, you have to make, I mean, not 2011, but September 11, 2018 uh, issue of them uh, stopping the RFEs is important that you, that you file the paper, sorry for that, that you file the paperwork right because any mistake will cost you. Um, so this is Attorney Sharp Rally, and we are, we are here today live on uh, KLK 1170 Radio Zindagi. And I wanted to thank Michael for being on the board with me. And also today is, um, we are, I was, I'm talking about immigration law, and we are seeing more and more things are uh, getting really, really <laughs> difficult. And that, I've been saying that, it seems like I'm a broken record. I keep saying that, but every month, every week, we're seeing more difficulties, and people are getting really, really frustrated. 
And one of the things that I've been getting a lot of calls are people who have children at age four, and that's something very, very unfair. And uh, because once they turn 21, they're pretty much, uh, and uh, they're pretty much broken from the family because they, their parents were not able to secure a green card, so they didn't have a green card. So in order for them to stay in the U.S., they have to move to F1 visa, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So what it is doing is kind of breaking the family. Either the family leaves the entire family, or the child has to go on F1. That's why we are telling people if they get a chance to go on EB1, please take it, and we can even use your previous priority date and, and plug it in. And if you need help on EB1, feel free to reach out to us. It's at uh, the, the number to, um, the, to our office, 510-742-5887. We can help you on also national interest waivers, et cetera, et cetera. And we, we, are, we have talked about a little bit about the situations going on now with H1B with high rate of denials and also uh, of the visa built-in. Uh, and uh, now we talk also about the H4, uh, H4 visa for dependent, especially children. And we have a petition online, change.org. Please sign it. It's give more rights to H4 visa children. And hopefully, uh, we'll, uh, I, I don't know if we can really make a change now, but hey, we never know. Things might, uh, might actually work out. So bottom line right now, we are seeing a lot of things happening. Uh, one of them is uh, this public charge thing that they, are, they, are, they have amended the, the, they are going to amend it. I'm sorry, I apologize. I'm having some difficulties with my phone. So I think we have one caller, right, Michael? Let me take one, the caller, and then we'll talk about this new rule of um, public charge. This is Shapira, you live in AM. Hello? 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 I think I lost the caller. Please feel free to call again, 510-657-1170. 510-657-1170. I think we have another 15 minutes to go, right, Michael? So please uh, feel free to call. And I'm talking about this new uh, rule now that will be uh, proposed rule that basically are going to make things very difficult for people who have taken public charge. They won't get and public charge. The, the question is that what what they're going to use as public charge. Usually we, we are talking about welfare and things like that, but they're extending that, including to possibly uh, hospital uh, hospitalization. So be careful. Uh, in, if people are used to be not a problem, now it might be a problem if this rule passes. Uh, let me take another caller, Michael. Hello. Hi, I have, hi, I have a question um, regarding EB1. Yeah. Um, uh, how, how, how long is it taking for getting the 140 approved these days, and uh, how do you see the success rate? Well, the I-140, I always do the EB1, EB1 application. EB1, which like one? From EB1, EB1A. EB1. Yeah, EB1A. Which EB1? EB1A. EB1A, it all depends. If we are not, we, we, we got few in 12 days. Some we even got in six days. Some we got in one month. Um, uh, if there's no RFP, which is the case in most EB1, if it is done properly, um, it doesn't take that long. If the, it is the, done under premium. Or if it's done under premium. If it's not done under premium, I don't do. I don't have an idea because I don't do them without premium. Uh, you so don't I don't know exactly the real uh, timing. You I might see. have to check on the forums on that. But I don't okay. recommend anybody not to doing it on premium. There's no purpose for it. Uh, if it I is, see. if the lawyer is good and they're doing a good job, they should do it on premium. And uh, we just, we don't, we don't really recommend people who have a chance to use premium not to use premium. Okay. I see. Okay. So I don't know. It might take eight months. Uh, like EB1C, there's no premium. So if I base it on EB1C, it's taking almost four, 12 months to 14 months. Oh, okay. okay. So, but 1A is uh, okay. you're saying eight months, but you can take the premium, right? Yeah. Uh, 
I don't know exactly the timing because I don't. I I always file on premium, so okay. I don't know exactly from our okay. experience. Okay. Okay. No problem. Okay. Thanks. Good luck to you. Let me take another caller. This shop right here, eleven a.m. Hello. Hello. Hello, Mr. Shopper. Yes, Hi, how are this you? is Raj. I'm doing good, Hi, thank Raj. you very much. Yes, go ahead. I have a question, sir. So, uh, I applied mm -hmm. my uh, uh, I-140 under EB-1B, and, mm -hmm. and uh, priority date is uh, March 30th, 2018. And uh, mm -hmm. in fact, I-140 got approved, and uh, I'm on H-1 currently. Second H one B, which is uh, mm -hmm. which is still uh, two thousand twenty twenty one. Mm -hmm. Sorry. So yeah, mm -hmm. my question is, when would uh, the right time? You know, uh, I think uh, the priority dates of our have been put to two thousand twelve for each one as well, right? Mm -hmm. well, which one did you file? EB one, EB two. EB1B, yes, outstanding professor and researcher. Okay. So, and, uh, uh, when yeah. did you file under premium? No. I won't put yes, I, you that, right? So, uh, what I did was I, I initially filed regular, uh, I filed it regularly, then uh, after one month I filed the premium processing. And it got approved within mm -hmm. five days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, good, good. Yes. Okay. Yes. Right. My question is, when they any idea when they you know, uh, um, because uh, all the EB ones are taken, right? All the five thousand, whatever it is. In October, I was waiting. October first, they haven't released anything. Mm -hmm. What is your yep. priority date? You said uh, March thirtieth, two thousand eighteen. Oh, okay, okay. Right now, they are processing two thousand. Well, they are processing two thousand seventeen, and they are issuing two thousand sixteen. So I think you you will have to wait another six months or so. Hopefully, it will clear by that time. Okay. And with the rules, another question, that, uh, Mr. Shopra. Uh, with the new rules, probably we don't know yet. But I was just wondering, you know, does it affect the 485 in any, any way, or? Uh... Well, they have already kind of tested. They they say some cases will have interviews, which was not something regular. And um, so, but if it is done properly, no, there's no problem. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Shapra. You have a wonderful okay. day. Good luck to you. Thank Good you luck to you. Wish you all the best. Uh, thank you. So let me okay. take, yeah, thank you. Let me take another caller, Michael. Do we have another caller? This is Shapra. You're live in here. Hi, Shah. Hi. Good morning. Uh, this is Kaushik speaking. Good morning. I uh, have a question, sir. Uh, so this is regarding my uh, H-1B. Uh, currently, mm -hmm. my H-1B, uh, I mean, my I-94 has expired and my company, my current company has filed for extension. And mm -hmm. uh, a couple of uh, weeks back, I had got a good offer from a different company, uh, which is asking me to, uh, which says that they will file the transfer and is asking me to join on the receipt basis. Mm hmm uh, so yeah. what do you suggest here? Like, is there a risk involved here just because my current I-94 has expired? Yes. Well, this is the same question we had uh, uh, earlier in the show. I don't know if you had the time to uh, chance to hear. But no, sir, I'm um, just logged in. Okay, okay. So, yeah, um, what I said is basically... Since you, your I-94 is already expired and the transfer is being done basically on what we call a bridge because the extension is pending, it is a risky business to join. However, you can, what happens is that there are three things that can happen on the transfer. Number one, they might approve it based on the bridge, so you get your I-94 without having to leave. Number two, they might not, they might approve it as a council of processing. That means they approve the H-1B kind of movement from company A to company B, but they don't give you the I-94, you have to leave the country and come back. Number three, they might deny it because technically um, they might say you should not have filed a transfer, you should have filed it as a new employment. So it is risky, especially in that situation, but if you want to take the chance, you can go ahead, but it is risky. 
Okay, okay. Because, because there is nothing, I mean, technically speaking, there is nothing like a transfer of H1B, right, Shah? Because it's, it's all a new, brand new application that they file. Yeah, yeah. Well, transfer is the technical word we use. It doesn't really exist. But if you look at the form I-129, they kind of put it there because what the transfer entails is are two things. Number one, you're saying you're cap exempt. You're moving from company A to company B. And number two, you're saying, I have a good I-94. I want you to move it from company A to company B. In your case, your cap exemption is there, but the I-94 is not there, so it doesn't really become a transfer. So that's why we call it a new employment cap exemption. So it's just a lot of bunch of mumbo jumbo, but at the end of the day, transfer can only occur when you have an, a solid status and you're moving, unless you okay. claim what we call the bridge. And that's a little bit tricky and difficult, so be careful. Okay. Okay, and and as a as a uh, you know a quick thing, so even if I uh, can I can I do this? Can I file the transfer? Um, and can I can my new employer file the uh, you know H one B transfer? And can I then convert my current H one B extension to premium and close this loop, uh, and then join the new employer? Sure. Would that make sense here? So that I'm closing yeah, the current loop. Yeah, but then there's no there's no premium. Plus, at the time when you filed, it was pending. It was not approved yet. So it is possible, but there's a lot of risk involved. So be very careful. Okay. 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 Good luck. Let me and, take, and let me take another call. If someone is waiting right now, this is Bray yeah. Eleven. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Hey, sir. Good morning. Um, can you talk a little? Good bit morning, about sir. How are you? Up here. I don't know if you spoke about it. Has it become like into practice? What will happen going forward if that notice up here does become a big deal? I can't hear you. I'm sorry. Can you repeat? So my question is, I heard that there is something called as notice to appear that is going to be happening. Yes, yes. And the, Has it become a law? Somebody says it's not. Somebody says mm -hmm. that it may be there. Okay, okay. So can you talk a little bit about it? Okay, very interesting question. Well, first of all, yes, now it is effective, the NTA. NTA has always been there. It's not a new law. It's just how they apply it. Um, it, is, it has always been if you get out of status, they have a right to put you in deportation, and that's what the NTA is. It's a notice that they are putting you in deportation, notice to appear in front of a judge. That's the short NTA. So... Yes, it is effective. However, they said a few things. Number one, for people on employment base, they're not going to really use it. And on cases of humanitarian cases like VAWA, that's why they won't use it. But a uh, very interesting question. Unfortunately, for students and for marriage cases, etc., be ready that as soon as people get denied, they might be placed in deportation. But they also said that they they kind of going to kind of evaluate the situation and, and and decide, but we have to be ready for it. So yeah, it is there as from October first. Hmm? Okay, I think. Hi, Sha. Uh, uh, hi, hi, Amit. This is, is this Amit? Yes, it is. How are you? Yes, yeah, I'm doing well. I'm doing. Amit, give me a few minutes and then I'll sure. let you go ahead. Um, no so, ladies and gentlemen, let me wrap up a little bit. We had a lot of discussion about visible chain, et cetera, et cetera. So, if you need help uh, on EB1, especially right now, a lot of people, we are getting a lot of approval. So, congratulations to the team. Please give us a call, 510-742-5887. The website to check, attorneyonair.com, attorneyonair.com. And also, I, just before I move to our meet. Let me talk a little bit about debt settlement. A lot of people have been asking us if they have to leave, what happens to their debts here, etc. This is where we can actually help you. We can get rid of the debts for a full part payment, which is called a settlement. For example, you own credit cards, you own second mortgages, etc., etc. We might be able to negotiate this debt, bring it to a lower price, and you pay it, and then you get out of it. And that means basically you don't owe anything else. Uh, of course, this is not an easy task. It's not a debt consolidation. This is a one payment time. So you have to have money and you have to have a hardship. So if you need help on those, give us a call, 510 
and the blog to check your death settlement attorney dot com. I wanted to thank you all for listening, and uh, hopefully I'll be back next week at the same time. And anything I told you today is my is for educational purposes only. You should not act or refrain to act solely on the information provided. You should contact an attorney if you have any questions. So I'll let Amit continue. Amit, I think you have like 11 minutes to go, so go ahead. Uh, Great. Uh, thank you, Shah. Thank you for uh, letting me yes. uh, <clears throat> be.